So today I'm flying a customer's V-tail Bonanza. Um, still trying to get my head around where it gets its name from, but um, anyway, I'm sure that'll become apparent shortly. This one's a 1961 N35. Um, so quite an old girl, but really classic bit of gear. So um, while we wait for these showers to clear, I'll show you around it. Actually really big control surfaces when you get up close, which I suppose it makes sense that they have to be, given that it's two surfaces doing the job of three. Big trim tabs too, which are only actually an elevator trim, not a, or the equivalent of an elevator trim, and not a rudder trim. Opening the cow's not quite as user friendly as the A36 I flew last week, which, for anyone who's seen that video, it just had a single lever here, which was really easy to use. This one has four Zeus fasteners, for want of appropriate pronunciation. Two bladed prop, as we all know, two for go and three for show. I always like to have a very thorough pre-plight on a new aeroplane that I haven't flown before, especially one that happens to be half a century old. How cool is the logo on it though? So unlike the A36 that has the big clamshell doors, or whatever you like to call them, you know, this one has the much smaller baggage door, so your uh, rear seat passengers have either got to climb behind the pilot seats through the front door, or you just got to shove them through this square hole here. Uh, depending on how much you like them. Let's get up and have a look inside. Now have a look at this. This just oozes style. Look at that 1961 panel. And something that's really cool, have a look at the switches. And then that one there is the flap lever. So that flaps up. But then to go down, you can't quite see there, but you've got a gate. You can pull it past, push it down. That's the gate there, up, and flap lever neutral. Gear's much the same. The little wheel there, and underneath, that fella there is the lock so that you don't accidentally retract it on the ground. In there, battery master switch, circuit breakers, more circuit breakers, down under the panel there, I think that's just a really cool, classic panel. Speaking of cool and classic, have a look at the emergency gear extension. So behind the pilot seats, you pull this cover off, flip this handle out with a little timber handle on it, and wind it 50 winds, they reckon. Uh, so that'll be good fun trying to do it night or in turbulence, but yeah, really cool, classic look. So, let's see if we can fire this aeroplane up. Make sure I've got the right key for a start. Oh, yeah, that works, good. Okay, brakes, pressure. Mm. Park brake's been eaten in a previous life, but seems to have clamped the pressure anyway, so that works. Very upright seating position. I can reach everything, it just feels funny. Anyway, we'll live with that. I'll open what looks like the glove box, but is actually where the circuit breakers and the and the master switch is. So we'll make sure we've got the gear down, got that pin across, and we'll go the battery master on. Oh yeah, fuel gauges appear to be moving. Oil temperature's moved. Everything seems to work. That's good. Landing gear down light is illuminated, so that's the main thing. Thank you, Dake. Let's put some fuel into it. So we're gonna make sure the prop is rich. Mixture will go, oh, sorry, prop's full fine. Mixture is rich. Back, back, go up to prime, and we'll go ox fuel pump on. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll go throttle back. Open. Thank you, Duke. Now these are really cool switches we we're looking at before. We'll go the beacon on. Okay. Clear prop. Might have to reverse my hands for the start there. One, two, both, and let's go. That 
So I've just chained a fairly significant quantity of water out of particularly the right hand tank, uh, but also a bit out of the sump down here, the lowest point in the fuel system, uh, which is under that little door down there. Um, one of the risks of old aeroplanes and rainy weather. <laughs> 